Here we have an example that we're going to simplify. A Norton uh, take this complex network and simplify it down so we can create either the Norton or the Thevenin and equivalent circuit. To do that we need to find any two of these three as previously stated. In this one we're going to go straight into finding the internal resistance of the circuit using source zeroing. We will just simply zero out the two existing sources. So the current source is removed and the voltage source is replaced by a short circuit. Now if you look carefully, left to right, you'll see this 20 ohm here is directly in parallel with this 5. As you can see it's connected, both ends of the two resistors are connected together. So 20 ohms are parallel with 5. They're in series with the 6 ohm, plus 6 ohm. And all of that together from there back to there is in parallel with the 10 ohms. So if we resolve that, 20 ohms in parallel with 5 is 4 ohms, 4 ohms plus 6 ohms is 10 ohms, 10 ohms in parallel with 10 ohms, 5 ohms. So our internal resistance is 5 ohms. So now we're going to look for the short circuit current. Now immediately the 10 ohm resistor on the right becomes irrelevant and we can ignore it in our analysis. So how do we do this? This is a little more complicated because it's not obvious immediately how we're going to distribute the currents from the different sources. So what we'll do here is we'll use the superposition theorem. What that is, is because we have two sources, there are three steps. If there were three sources, there'd be four steps. So we zero each source, we analyze each source in turn by zeroing all other sources. So our step one will be to zero the current source and find the contribution to the short circuit current from the voltage source. Then our step two will be to zero the voltage source and find the contribution of the current source to the short circuit current. And our third step will be to add those two contributions together. So here, step one, we've zeroed the current source, that is it's disappeared. And we're now analysing a circuit that consists of a 5 ohm in parallel with a 6 ohm. As you can see that this end of the 6 ohm is connected to this end of the 5 ohm and this end of the 6 ohm is connected to this end of the 5 ohm. So they're directly in parallel, 5 ohm in parallel with 6 ohm. And they're in series with the 20 ohm plus 20 ohm. So if we put 10 volts over the total resistance, we'll work out the current here. Then we use the current divider rule and we work out the current in this branch here and that gives us a contribution to the short circuit current. So 10 volts over the resistance we've just calculated, 440 milliamps. 440 milliamps here goes into the current divider rule. We're looking for the current in the 6 ohms, so we multiply by the 5, the opposite resistor, and we get 200 milliamps. So the contribution of the voltage source to the short circuit current is 200 milliamps. So now we'll go to step 2 and we're going to zero the voltage source and find the current source contribution. So there we've zeroed the voltage source. Now the 20 ohm is now in parallel with the 5 ohm. As you can see one end of the 20 is connected to one end of the 5 and the other end of the 20 is connected to the other end of the 5. 20 in parallel with 5 is 4 ohms. So if we look at the current source, it's sitting uh, between a 4 ohm resistor and a 6 ohm resistor so the current will be split between those two according to the current divider rule. So we just want to multiply, uh, we want to find the current I2, the current in the 6 ohm, so we're using the 4 ohm in our calculation, the opposite resistance, 1 amp times 4 ohms over 10 ohms is 0.4 of an amp. So our contribution of the current source to the short circuit current is 0.4 of an amp. So now, step 3, we add those two contributions together, 200 milliamps plus 400 milliamps is 600 milliamps. So we already had the internal resistance of the network, 5 ohms, we've got the short circuit current, 600 milliamps. We can calculate the open circuit voltage, 3 volts, and we can put them straight into our Norton and Thevenin equivalent. 
So either of the two circuits below can be used to replace the complex circuit above. So Norton equivalent and Thevenin equivalent circuits using superposition theorem to analyze the original circuit.